Hello to all my friends out there in YouTube land. It's your good buddy, Fantastic Phil here. And welcome back to the channel. We're in the kitchen. You know what that means. It's not snack time. It's not comic time. It's cooking with comics time. But one can argue this doesn't have anything to do with comic books. And they might be right, but there is a connection. We'll talk about that later. I'm excited because today... In honor of what may be the final episode of one of my favorite television shows, Ted Lasso, we're going to make the Ted Lasso biscuits. Uh, I have all of my ingredients laid out here. I was going to say, by the way, I was going to use my, um, what do you call it, tripod, brought it up, set it up, and I was like, no, I'm just going to do this by hand just to annoy people. No, just because I think it's a little bit easier for this type of thing, especially when you get to see my thumb. So thumbs up which is a good reminder to do thumbs up and all those lovely youtube -y things. All right, so our ingredients are here. We've got eight ounces, that's two sticks of butter, and that's been sitting out here, oh, here you go, for a little while, uh, just to get it room temperature, so it's nice and soft. I have three quarters of a cup, here, I'm gonna go back here. So eight ounces of butter, Three quarters of a cup powdered sugar, right there. Two cups of flour. A quarter, hold on, let's do this. We're gonna move the flour out of the way. There you go, quarter teaspoon of coarse salt. I just used regular salt, I don't think it really matters, but we'll find out. Oh, I should add, um, one of the recipes that I was looking at was like, don't skimp on the butter. The butter makes the cookie use the finest European butter you could find. And um, I don't know why I said that in a partial accent, but uh, I'm on a budget, so I just used, and there's my thumb again. Uh, this is why we should probably use a tripod. But anyway, that's why I, uh, I just use Trader Joe's butter. So if you wanna get fancy, get fancy. And then I've got a cooking sheet here. This is a nine by 13. They said for the best results, to use an eight by eight or a nine by nine, but nine by 13 will work. Um, and anyway, I usually don't go for best results. I go for good to okay results <laughs> when I'm cooking. This is the first time I'm making this recipe too, but let's, uh, let's get working. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sticks of butter and I'm gonna take them out of this smaller bowl and put them in this bigger bowl. Why may I ask? Because I'm gonna use a mixer and uh, also because I love washing dishes. So let me go ahead and get the mixer out and uh, get ready for that. Now, I just want to point this out. There is a fancy, I shouldn't say fancy, but a nice KitchenAid mixer. But um, I've been told the preference is not to use that. Uh, so I'm going to go with the hand mixer. Okay, so I had to get a bigger bowl just a couple minutes in, uh, and I'll show you why. I started doing it here. And I had to cover it up a bit. But the mess is pretty much contained to me. So I'll get a bigger bowl and resume. Okay, so this is kind of where I'm at. I had to move it to the bigger bowl. And uh, I should have added too that I was gradually adding the powdered sugar. Um, I should note, in case you've never seen this channel before and you think, oh, here's a guy who's baking. I'm not a baker. I'm just a guy who has a lot of questionable ideas, uh, probably a little later, later in the day than I should. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. She said, mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard her. She's watching Hulu and uh, is being very patient to pause it. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna sift the flour into this and add the salt, then mix it on low a little bit. And then once that's all combined, uh, I will come back. And uh, shout out to Cheerios, hashtag not sponsored. So I may have a problem here. This is how it's combined, and I'm not quite sure why. My thought is maybe this isn't, this is too dry, and I don't know how that exactly works. Hey, honey? Yeah. Can I ask you to just take a quick look? She's trying to relax, and I'm interrupting her relaxation. So do you think I could just kind of pat this so it's more together, or what would you do in this situation? What are you trying to do? Well, this should be a dough, and right now it looks kind of crumbly. 
Well, because you have to knead it with your hands. Didn't say to do you, Did you put all the ingredients as part of measurements? Or? Yes. Yeah, I would stick your hand in it, try to knead it a little bit, um, see if it's the consistency of a dough, and then go from there. All right. Thank you. So I can't record while I'm kneading, so I'm going to do that, and I'll see you back. Well, hold on for us. I could do a little. Bit. Hey, honey. Yeah. I need a you. A what? I need you. So you got it? Yeah. Uh -huh. I got her to smile, so it's all good. See you in a bit. Okay, so kneading it was definitely the way to go. I had kneaded it into a ball. Um, that part I kind of ended on a little last spin, if that's why it's like that. And then I um, took another piece of parchment paper, put it on top of the pan, and I just tried to flatten it out. I, I asked my wife if we had a rolling pin, because I figured that'd be easier. And she didn't answer me. So I don't know if it's because she didn't want me touching the rolling pin or if we don't have a rolling pin. Maybe her birthday's in a couple weeks. Maybe she wants a rolling pin. No, we have a rolling pin. Okay, so we have one. She just didn't want me to touch it. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to throw this in the refrigerator for half an hour and clean up. So I will come back when this is chilled. And that is so that when it bakes, it gives the butter a chance to form uh, from what I understand, so it doesn't melt so quickly. Because uh, this is very buttery. I don't know if you saw my ingredients, but um, it's definitely not a, a health cookie, why don't we say. Uh, and again, I should add this. If you're coming here just looking for a recipe, check a different channel. This, uh, this is not pretty. I'm not a chef. I even forgot to put on an apron until after I got butter and flour all over my shirt. But uh, see in a bit. I just took our dough out of the fridge, and I had perfect timing too because the oven just buzzed. I'm going to cook it at 325 for 30 to 35 minutes until the top is golden brown. Uh, one thing that the recipe suggests, which I'm going to do now, is to pre-slice the, uh, the dough before putting it into the oven. This will make it easier to, uh, to slice when it comes out of the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll take a quick little shot of that before I stick it in the oven. Okay, so this is sliced up. I used a pizza cutter. I figured that would be an easier way of getting... It's straighter. I kind of didn't do it too straight around here, as you can see. But uh, we'll throw it in and go from there. And, and I kind of use the opportunity of cutting it just to kind of clean up my edges there, too. So that'll just be, be kind of a little excess uh, cookie, I guess, for us to taste. Okay, so I just put everything in the oven, and I just started the dishwasher, which probably sounds really good on this video. Subscribe now. Uh, and I'm going to have a little discussion with my wife just see how she's feeling and whatnot. And I'm gonna see if she knows the connections on why this is sort of kind of comic book related. So just to set the table as we like to do sometimes, honey, you, you've you watched, was it one or two episodes of Ted Lasso with me? Mm, maybe two. Maybe two, you're not a fan. No. No, why not? I think it's just so boring. You don't find Jason Sudeikis charming as Ted Lasso? I don't find the whole show charming. No. You don't like Jamie Tart or Roy Kent? It's nothing or... to do with the Those cast. are characters, it's not the cast. I'm not talking about the characters or the cast. I'm talking about the whole plot of the show. It's what, not to my liking. What is the plot in your opinion? In Soccer. your assessment, I should say. Soccer and this main character who's going through a divorce and I guess trying to find... Already the... divorced. Already divorced and trying to find a new love interest or a relationship I don't know no no he's he uh in case you haven't seen the series my wife again hasn't watched a lot of it with me uh Ted Lasso was I believe a football coach American football coach that's a distinction here and uh he was hired by uh by this uh the soccer team uh who the the owner lost the team in the divorce so now the ex-wife has control of the team. And her intention at first is to pretty much, because she's a, a woman scorned, as they say, ruin the thing that her ex-husband loves more than anything, uh, which is the soccer team. Uh, and she says, well, I'm going to hire a coach with no soccer experience or no English football experience, because that's what they call it there. But what she doesn't count on is that Ted Lasso is just a very positive guy. He's very charming. I guess you could say he's the kind of guy, you know, when they have the expression, honey, like kill him with kindness. Mm. 
which I don't know where they got that from because killing isn't a very kind thing to do. I would say win him over with kindness. That's what he's really kind of done, not only with the owner of the team, but with the players and uh, with his critics and even with some of the fans, as we saw in the most recent episode. Um, now, he actually dis- agreed to take this job because at the time uh, he was going through some marital problems and his wife was basically saying, look, I love you, but I need some space. So he figured, okay, well, there's going to be an ocean between us. And he tried to work it out, and unfortunately, things didn't go well. And that's been kind of an overarching thing in here where he's on very good terms with his wife. They get along beautifully, his ex-wife now. But he does have some stress issues. He has panic attacks and whatnot. Uh, But, you know, he's got a good coaching staff, his friend Beard that's been there forever, and they talk things out, and I think that's refreshing to see in a show, men actually just kind of talking things out with other men, with their friends. Um, Now, there are some loose connections to comics. Ted Lasso is not a comic. I'll go out and say that. And I want to see if my wife can guess. I know one of them I've said to her before. One of them, I think she knows uh, 50-50 shot because it's a bit of a stretch. And the third one, I, I can't see her getting it all. So, honey... Do you know which one I mean when I say this one? I think you know because I've said it before. I'll give you a hint. It involves my favorite player, Roy Kent, played by Ben Goldstein. Do you remember the one I'm talking about? He was on the Sesame Street we watched. No. Well, Ben Goldstein, who, by the way, was not an actor. He actually wrote this show. We, one of the writers, and they said, you do this character so well, you should just do it. But he appeared in Thor, Love and Thunder, that terrible film, at the very end of the film. Uh, spoiler. So we'll give people, let's see, three, two, one. Okay. Spoiler. Ben Goldstein, Roy Kent, plays Hercules at the end of Thor, Love and Thunder. Do you remember who I'm talking about now? Remember Hercules? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the one that I think you may get has more to do with Ted Lasso himself, the actor Jason Sudeikis. The next two actually do. Do you... There's actually four now that I come to think about it. But uh, Jason Sudeikis was popular... was a popular comedic actor on Saturday Night Live. And he left the show. His final show was the same final show as Kristen Wiig, whom you like from Bridesmaids. What comic book movie that we both hated (laughs) did Kristen Wiig appear in? Oh, was that Wonder Woman? Yes, she was Cheetah Yeah, in Wonder Woman 1984. Now, speaking of Saturday Night Live, this one I don't think you'd get either. He was also on there with a comedic actor by the name of Colin Jost. He's on Weekend Update. Do you know who Colin Joff's wife is? No. Scarlett Johansson, a.k.a. Black Widow. Oh, yeah. And the final connection, which I don't think you're going to get, Jason Sudeikis uh, was recently divorced within the past year or two. His wife is an actress by the name of Olivia Wilde. Do you remember her? Mm-hmm. Crazy Eyes from that movie where um, Ryan Reynolds and Jason Bateman peed in the fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fun fact, in, in separate to all this, she's actually supposedly, a, a, I think, a great niece of Oscar Wilde, the actor. But she has signed on to produce and maybe star in, I think it's supposed to be a Silk TV series, Spider-Man character Silk. Um, who knows if that's actually ever going to come to fruition, both with the writer strike and the fact that you know, I don't think that we're going to see many more streaming companies come to fruition. But there you go. There's four different connections that Ted Lasso and our biscuits or our butter cookies have to comics. So don't say that this isn't comic book related because this is my story and I'm sticking to it. So that was about seven minutes for me to babble. Uh, we've got like another 23 minutes at least for these cookies. Uh, anything you want to say before I cut to let the oven bake a little bit more the cookies bake thank you for watching
Well, we're not done. I'm not done, at least. Maybe you're going to bed, but I got a hot oven. I can't go to sleep. I got a hot oven and a hot wife. Well, you're not ending the recording? No, this is just a, a brief interlude. Anything you want to add to the interlude? No. Yeah. No. All right. I'm going to see you like in 20 minutes or so. For you, it's going to be a lot less time, though. Okay, so the timer just went off. So I'm just grabbing an oven mitt here. And I know extreme close up on my face. And let's grab a trivet. You can tell I'm married because I know what these things are. This is so your counters don't get screwed up. And let's see if these suckers are ready. They smell very buttery. So the object is it for it to be kind of golden brown which I think we're there and firm oh we're there too I think at least hey honey would you can you take a look at this would you call this golden brown you can either that or let it go for like five more minutes yeah no that's not yet it's getting there Okay, so we're going to put in for five more minutes. Is the bottom good? How do I know? Uh, you can't get the spatula. Oh, don't do it Okay, now. so five minutes later, I think it looks a little bit more golden. It's definitely firmer. I touched it. My wife said that that sounded strange. But uh, what's the... It looks, yeah. It looks a little bit more golden around than before. Right. I would check the bottom. So how do we check the bottom? Um, Can I just lift the parchment because it's... I was just thinking that, but then you may break it because it's... How does it look, Lisa? I can't see why you're lifting up the whole entire thing. You would have to lift up a little bit of the edge. Well, one of these edge, these edge pieces I don't really need. You want me to just cut it and... You can uh, cut it, yeah. Alright, hold on one second. My wife is showing me how to do the bottom test. Yeah, the bottom looks... The mom looks good right now. Okay. So we're proclaiming this now. I'm going to shut off the stove. See that? But this is the edge, so I don't know how the middle is going to look. I, I'm going to assume the middle is the same. Okay. You see well, how it's breaking because it's so buttery? And yes. It's more brittle. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to shut off the stove. Then I'm going to go over my little slice marks that you probably couldn't see until I went really close like this with the knife there and uh, we're gonna let it cool okay so I just went back in and made some careful cuts a little bit of cracking but not too bad the edges I really don't care about you know it's mainly these pieces in the middle and no I'm not evenly distributed uh, as far as the size of the squares but that's okay so this is gonna cool maybe I'm just gonna have to let it sit overnight at this point but uh, I will do a follow-up as soon as it's ready okay they've been drying for a little bit I'm kind of whispering now because my wife went to bed already um, they're pretty good. They're a little bit more delicate, I would say, than a butter cookie, you know, like the kind that you get at your grandmother's house that, you know, sometimes you open up the tin and sometimes it's pennies, sometimes it's sewing materials, but yeah, at those magical times it is cookies, so it's of course not that good. I doubt this is good as Ted's. Um, I don't know, I feel like despite the amount of butter I added, like it could be more buttery. And I guess that's what the people were talking about uh, who wrote the recipe when they were saying try to use like a high-end or like a European butter. But uh, my budget wasn't there. Now, um, they recommend sprinkling it with granulated sugar. Once you're done, I'm out of that. Um, so I just used a, some powdered sugar. It doesn't look as pretty, but I think it does the trick as far, excuse me, as far as sweetening it a little bit. What I'm going to do, uh, we're visiting my in-laws tomorrow. I'm going to be actually working from their house. So I think I'm going to pack up some of these, at least half of these, and get their impressions. See, uh, I don't know if they're going to want to be on camera, but at least I'll give you their impressions. So uh, stay tuned. No, we didn't need all of them. <laughs> I'm working at my in-laws today, so I figured let me go ahead and bring some to them. But I just wanted to show you the bottom of the cookie here. This is one that was cracked. That's why it's like that. My don't mind my finger. So it's pretty good there. Nice kind of brown. 
Uh, it's a little drier than I would have wanted, but still buttery. I, I wish I did have granulated sugar. I think that would have made a little bit of a difference, but uh, as it's good for my first attempt. And I, I do think I understand now what these recipe books were talking about uh, as far as the quality of the butter that you're using. So maybe if I decide to make these again, I'll use a, like a Kerrygold or, or something like that. One of the, one of the uh, websites recommended Kerrygold specifically. And up until recently, that's what we used. Uh, they got a little bit pricey, I think, with some of the tariffs going on, but I digress. Uh, my wife hasn't tried it yet, so uh, after she tries it, my in-laws will try it. We'll give you our full review. Okay, so we are at my in-laws house, who was nice enough to, to let me work here today and help take care of MT and, uh, and my wife. Thank you again for that. And yes, of course, you. fed us very nicely. So I brought over some of the Ted Lasso cookies here. Whatever's left of it. <laughs> yep. So we'll do a little bit of round table. Uh, nobody else wants to be on camera. My little guy's playing with my hat, so you just gotta deal with this bee's nest of hair right now. You're not on camera, don't worry. Okay, so Kai Mama, what are your thoughts on the cookie? Very nice, very nice, very good, very good. Very delicious. R2. Good. I'll say this. Artun has a very unique way of eating food, I just realized today. First, he only ate the cookies with a pair of tongs. And second, we had some pizza earlier and I noticed that he eats his pizza with a knife and fork, cuts it up real nice. And I asked him why and he said he's, he's fancy. He does wear white gloves all the time. So I'd imagine you don't wanna get pizza oil on the gloves. Oh God, okay. And ladies, he's sing single. Right? He enjoys long walks on the beach, <laughs> taking women shopping, and what else? And dancing. Yeah, he's getting beat red with his face. You're not on camera, you don't have to get red. <laughs> and of course you have my love. He thought it was funny too. <laughs> we have my lovely wife, uh, again, not on camera. What are your thoughts on the cookies? It reminded me of my snowball cookies right off the bat. She makes... <laughs> Bless you. This is my father-in-law in the other room. <laughs> Trying to be funny. She makes snowball cookies around Christmas. So are you saying that you think Ted Lasso ripped off your snowball cookies? Yes, absolutely. But you enjoyed the cookie overall? Yeah, because it reminded me of my cookies that I make. So would that convince you to watch more Ted Lasso, you think? No. No. No, but you guys are cut from the same cloth. You're, you're cookie buddies. Uh, no? It's just made up, though. Is it really his cookies? No. Maybe it might be. I don't know. Who actually said it was his cookies? You know who did? Society. Exactly. So there's no proof. <laughs> That's all the proof you there's need. There's no sound proof that it's actually I did his think, cookies. by the way, of another connection between Ted Lasso and comic book movies. I forgot but, about this. Well, we'll give everybody a three count because there's spoilers from the net last uh, Spider-Man film that came out, No Way Home. Mm -hmm. So it's four, three, two, one. So in the after credits scene, remember you have Venom on the beach, mm -hmm. Eddie Brock, and then he gets sucked back into his dimension. Yeah. The bartender who was serving drinks, sorry, my son decided to play with his toy at the same time. <laughs> right, buddy? You wanted my hat and your toy. Okay. So the bartender, I don't know the actor's name, but he's the same actor who plays one of the players on the show, uh, Danny Rojas. So that's four Ted Lasso comic book connections. So I don't want to hear that this isn't related to comics. Hmm. So everybody seemed to like the cookies. I think if I use a different quality butter, it might I help it. I thought it was fine. I thought it was delicious. Well, when you make your snowball cookies, do you use just regular butter? Do you use Kerrygold? I use whatever butter we have on hand. Usually Kerrygold you get, but it shouldn't matter. Supposedly the European butters taste better. That's what people are saying. Yeah. So we'll go around the room. Any final thoughts? Kai Mama, any final thoughts? Do you want to say goodbye, hello to anybody? Any shout outs? 
<laughs> you want to say hi to any of your friends? Hi. Yep, she says hello. <laughs> Artun? Yeah, he says he's accepting all applications. <laughs> but I'm going to warn you, Artun is like a wild stallion. You can't, you might not be able to tame him. Uh, you can message me if you'd like for his phone number and I'll pass you along. But people don't know what he looks like. If he approves. That's part of the mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery date. I would say if we want an honest assessment of our tune, if you were to mix, I'm going to say uh, George Clooney and Brad Pitt and a little bit of, of Danny DeVito, I think you've got our tune. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> <I'm splattered. laughs> Three movie stars. Wow. There you go. What about me? What about you? What about my mix of three? You're beautiful on your own. Uh, You're you. unique. So. <laughs> He's smiling too. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts for people, honey? Thank you for watching. Have a great night. Yep. Peace, love, and comics. <laughs>